most, the county executive has made it a priority for economic development and also bringing resources closer to those who need it. This launch is the third edition of what is a running um, effort of five to make sure that all the different areas and regions within the county are covered by <coughs> someone and those who will be on site to make sure that the resources are delivered directly to those who need it the best. Before we begin, let me recognize a few people in the audience. Um, Jeff Samuels from Senator Van Hollen's office. <laughs> Vicki Garcia from Congressman Sabrino's office. <laughs> Terry Ford, CEO, Washington Independence Health Group. County Council President, Nancy Navarro. <laughs> County Councilman, William Jawando. <laughs> as well as some County, Montgomery County Department heads. Anita Bals Balsuelo? Balsuelo. Balsuelo. Sorry, Anita. It's okay. <laughs> All right, and also uh, the 3D Commander, Frank Stone. <laughs> Also, let me recognize the Business Solution Group, which uh, is Judy Stevenson. Vance <laughs> Walker is located at this particular center, so we want to uh, thank him for all the hard work he, he did to get this launch right here off the ground. And for those of you who don't know, which shouldn't be anyone in this room, Mr. J. Ru Van. <laughs> hardworking man. Uh, we want to thank him for all his time and dedication as well. You can tell by the commitment of himself and the staff that we are serious about what we're doing here today. Uh, let me move forward with now introducing our first guest for remarks. Um, this is the County Executive, Mr. Mark Elbert. So thank you all for being here. I'm very happy to be here. I said when I was running for this office that I was going to revitalize economic development in Montgomery County and I was going to put economic development back in the regional services centers and make connections directly with people in the community. And we're doing that. So we were serious about it when we were running and we're serious about doing it when we're governing. This is really important to bring these activities back to the local level in Montgomery County. Uh, we're working with our partners in the Economic Development Corporation on projects at, the, at a level that they work best at, and we're working at the local level, which is what we think is a place that this county uh, should have stayed in, and we're getting back into it. So I'm very happy to be here today. Um, <clears throat> I started the year with uh, my friend Sydney Katz, um, and we did a tour around the county. We did six meetings out in the business community where we asked people to tell us why you think Montgomery County is so unfriendly. I mean, let's be blunt about this. You know, we've heard these stories for years about how difficult we were to deal with. And at a point last year, when we were all running, and I realized, you know, we never actually found out why people think we're difficult to deal with. So we decided we'd find out. And so we've, we've had these listening sessions. Uh, we've had them all staffed by, our, by the staff from my departments. We've taken notes. Um, we're changing the processes the way Montgomery County runs. In, no, in November, I got this down on my notes here, there are two dates, uh, the 20th in the Up County Regional Service Center and the 21st in the Wheaton Community Recreation Center where we're doing charrettes. So the charrettes are to bring back to the community the input we got from the community to make sure that we're working on the right things. So when, we, when it's time to move to like legislation and regulation, that we're reflecting what we've heard in the community, but we didn't wait for that to happen to start changing things. I, don't, I didn't see um, uh, my, my amazing procurement person here, uh, Matt Shetty, but uh, we've, we've made some changes already. And so our contracts are now readable and they're like 12 to 15 pages or so instead of 150 pages. And you get a one page summary of what you're bidding on. So you actually know what the project is you're expected to do. Uh, we are opening up our procurement processes so more small businesses have the opportunity to procure. We're looking at extending minority and women preferences into the small business reserve 
which didn't have small, which did not have preferences in, the, in that reserve. Uh, we have uh, submitted a bill to the county council that we give business, businesses, local businesses, preferences in bidding on Montgomery County contracts, preferences for points and preferences for price. So we're willing to spend more <coughs> on a contractor who's in Montgomery County because we know that money's gonna stay in Montgomery County. If I give it to a company that comes out of Virginia, you'll be lucky if you get somebody buying lunch over here. And then all the other money in that contract leaves. So we wanna make sure that to the extent we can, we preference local businesses for contracts and make sure that money stays in the county. Um, I got tired of talking to my friends who said, well, you know, I live here in Montgomery County, I moved my business to Prince George's County. And I asked them why, and they said, because Prince George's County has preference points. So I can still bid in Montgomery County, and I'm not benefited or hurt by being in Prince George's County, but I'm hurt when I bid on small contracts in Prince George's County. So we thought, well, we'll level the playing field and give preference points here, and then if we can talk with Prince George's County, and if they want to mutually disarm, for our businesses and their businesses, we can do that. And if they're happy being, you know, protecting their own, then we can protect their own too. But, but we can play by whatever rules are out there, but we're gonna make sure we play by the same rules and we play by strong <coughs> rules that we don't disadvantage our people over people in other jurisdictions. So that's very important to me. Um, I think you're gonna see a lot of changes that open the county up to more small business, more small business um, participation. Small businesses, 50 and under, are the largest number of businesses in the county. Um, you play a really important role here. Um, you know, we, we don't talk about it enough, or we talk about it symbolically, and then do all our programs for the heavy hitters and don't do programs for the small people. So we're trying to rebalance this a little bit to make sure that we get the kind of economic activity that we need, and you're the ones that are gonna fill the shopping centers. And let's be honest about this. Amazon wasn't going to fill any shopping center in Montgomery County. And they weren't going to be taking 2,000 or 4,000 square feet in these office buildings that have small vacancies. That's something that used to be filled by local entrepreneurs and something happened after the recession and those businesses haven't come back. So we're trying to recreate a culture that encourages those businesses to come back to form that takes space in Montgomery County and operate in <coughs> Montgomery County. Um, Jerome already introduced the, uh, the Business Solutions Group. How many of you, who's here, Ray? Yeah. Raise your hand up. So, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a team of people ready to work with you. Uh, on the 8th of November, we are hosting a Business Connect Montgomery Manufacturing Forum. This is another area where Montgomery County has been pretty much absent. And we want to look again at what the possibilities are for manufacturing. And I'm not averse to stealing ideas from other people. I know that Prince George's County did an analysis of their economic opportunities. And one of the things they identified was not only small business, but small business manufacturing is an opportunity. And Montgomery County has, over the years, on master plans I largely voted against, obliterated light industrial zones in the county, which has made it harder and harder for small businesses to operate. I hear this from people who have been pushed out. Hopefully we reach the end of the line of eliminating these places that are really valuable for Montgomery County. We're gonna make sure we can populate them and we can provide the opportunities for people to open businesses there. And I think manufacturing is an excellent avenue for us to get into because those are basically high paid jobs, even at the small level they're higher paid jobs. And if you've ever been to Hyattsville, <clears throat> back along Route 1 and the railroad tracks over there, and you go back to these little raunchy looking places with high paid workers making pretty astounding amounts of money for making fences and doing metal work and doing all kinds of things for people. Um, just because the stuff is dirty doesn't mean it doesn't make money. And we need not only to foster opportunities in that, but one of the things we're working on in workforce development, workforce development, and is, is to basically reinvigorate looking at jobs beyond going to college. And so we want to make sure we have an economy that functions at all levels, not just an economy that takes tech people, but an economy that takes people who aren't tech focused, but have skills, talents, and can do things that are profitable and beneficial for them. So I think I've gotten through all the points in a rather 
different way than they have been outlined here. Um, I did want to say the permitting service is offering free e-service training every Monday at 9 a.m. at DPS offices. And uh, two other things I will tell you. The, uh, you know the governor put a kibosh on the CCT for the moment. I was at a forum with uh, Kelly Schultz, who's the Secretary of Commerce, and uh, we are pushing to reopen that discussion. It is one of the most short-sighted decisions the governor's ever made, and I've got a list, but this probably goes to the top. You know, for a governor who says he's pro-business and wants to make business happen in Montgomery County, he just shut down Science City. There's about 200,000 square feet of additional development that occur there. And when that's done, if there's no progress on quarter cities, there is no more. And the governor should have known that, maybe he didn't know that, but we're going to have a meeting with um, Ms. Schultz and we're going to make sure that she takes a message back to the governor. This was not some parochial Montgomery County only transit project. This was a project about economic development and it was meant to open up the doors of Montgomery County to economic development. And we're going to make sure that the governor understands that that Quarter City's Transit Way and Science City are intimately intertwined. And you need the project in order to make sure that we go forward there. So we're gonna to continue to press on that. On the BRT on 29, we're studying uh, what we can do south of New Hampshire Avenue. I've told them that when they unfurl this project, they can call it Flash, but they can't call it BRT. If it's not running in dedicated lanes, and if it's stuck in mixed traffic for half of its length, it's not going as fast as it should go. So we're gonna make sure we put the name on it when we get the project built the right way. Um, we don't think that's an insurmountable problem. We think we can do this. So I'm looking forward to the next phase of the study coming forward so we can do the next phase <clears throat> of the project. And I know that Calvin Ball has um, raised the issue of BRT in Howard County again, and that's critically important for this corridor because we can get residents from Columbia up to Ellicott City to use a BRT to come south into Montgomery County, we can make a dent on the mess on Route 29. That's an awful lot of that's contributed by people that don't live here. To the extent we can get those people out of cars, we'll make 29 more functional. So that's a really high priority for us. And uh, with that, I'm gonna introduce um, Nancy Navarro. We have a proclamation for Economic Development Week. I think we have something that we're going to do together. Yes, right. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you everybody, for being here. I, I think that I would be remiss if I don't first acknowledge and congratulate Jerry Rubande, who is truly the mayor of the East mm -hmm. County. Mm -hmm. Actually, he temporarily was like the mayor of the Mid-County and East County for a while, and he did it seamlessly, so I don't know how he does it, but we're so, so <coughs> grateful to you and so fortunate to have him leading this effort. Um, I, I, I would have to say that, you know, for, for many years, we would have discussions on the county council about how could we best utilize our regional services centers. Um, and we always came up with this notion, and at least for me, it was a priority, to recognize that we have these assets located in different parts of the county, geographically accessible, so that we can deploy a lot of services and a lot of support to our communities, but the resources weren't there. And so I really, really do want, want to thank you, Mark, for following up on this promise of making sure that we could strengthen the regional services centers and really make them a hub of services for particular communities. And what I like about this model is that people like Jay Roo can work hand in hand with our business solutions group with stakeholders to customize what it is that this community needs, right? As someone who represented this community when I was first elected, I represented it for two years and understood that we have a vibrant continental African community, vibrant African American community, but not a lot of access to services and not a lot of support. Well, this is an opportunity then to customize these kinds of supports for those communities where entrepreneurship is just so vibrant, right? We look at the statistics and we know that immigrants are opening businesses at a very high rate, people of color are opening businesses at a very high rate, women are opening small business at a very high rate, and that's important for us here in our county. We just received our AAA bond rating. Okay. <laughs> and I believe it's like 
like the only county that has received AAA bond ratings since 1973. Mm -hmm. um, and what that says is that our economic and our fiscal indicators are very strong, but we cannot be complacent. You know, we know very well that we have to also understand our position in the region and, and make sure that we are positioning ourselves to take advantage of opportunities to expand our tax base. If we don't do that, then we can't invest in all of the issues that we hold dear. Okay, Montgomery County has values that we, we really, really prioritize, but we won't have that revenue. So I'm really excited about really taking this moment in time when we're still very strong to move forward with a very strategic initiative regarding economic development and access to services and supports. That's very, very exciting. I want to thank um, uh, you know Terry Ford, who is here uh, at Ventus, is going to is playing a key role in redevelopment and amenities in this part of the county. I see Jonathan Jen here. Obviously, we worked so hard to get the White Oak Science Gateway Plan going, and we're looking forward to FDA fi you know finalizing all of their consolidation, etc. There are a lot of assets that we can leverage here in this part of the county. And that's super exciting, but again, we cannot be complacent. Um, so on November 5th, um, you know, I'm introducing, and all my colleagues um, have agreed to sign on to a resolution where we are gonna adopt, the council's gonna adopt an economic development platform, a very high level platform, so that we can hold ourselves accountable in terms of how are we working towards this desired state, which is to make Montgomery that place that people wanna come and they wanna open businesses and they wanna operate. Um, and, and what I'm proposing is that we have four pillars, you know, that we look at housing, we look at transportation, workforce development, and business development, as they are all, all integrated, but have particular metrics and have particular guiding principles uh, so that we can do whatever we can to work alongside the administration, the executive, to make this a reality. I am a firm believer that if we don't have a broad framework, that we're really busy doing a lot of things, but how do we know that we're moving the needle? And I tend to be real competitive when it comes to our county standing in the region. And what I can tell you is that we have an interesting situation, right? We have Prince George's County, where I think that, you know, former executive Russian Baker really, really positioned it as a place to do business. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of land and it's cheap. <laughs> so they can start from scratch on a lot of issues, okay? We have Washington DC and they're doing just great. I mean, just look at their real estate and property taxes, and actually they have an issue with affordable housing uh, a crisis right now because of that, but they're having revenues coming in. Northern Virginia got Amazon, and we have so many assets, but we have got to position those assets, we have to leverage them, and we have to have a clear path so we can ensure that we are there as players as well. Uh, so that's my commitment, and this type of initiatives are gonna really help from the ground up, from the micro level, get us to that place, as we work on ensuring that our micro level framework matches. And from there on, I, I'm really hopeful for what we have to look forward to. So thank all of you who play a role in all of this. And I really do look forward to seeing all the great things that will be accomplished uh, with this particular center. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, when I first met her, I told her of several things that I wanted to do. And she said, we done it, we did it, we did it, we done it. And she set the bar very high. And I would like to say that the bar is still high. We've accepted, accepted her challenge. And the winner will be Montgomery County residents once we accomplish everything she wants to accomplish. So thank you again, Madam President. Uh, next up is one of our members from the Planning and Economic Development Committee. He is extremely passionate. He is all the way in when it comes to making economic development a success in this county. So please help me welcome Mr. Councilman Will Juwanto. Thank you, Jerome, and uh, thank you to the Council President and to Mark. This is a great day. I couldn't leave my fellow neighbor, East County resident, Council President Navarro, out alone here in That's East right. County. We, uh, we are neighbors, and uh, we are both very passionate about making sure that this community has what it needs to thrive, and uh, the, the residents deserve it. And I see many of my other neighbors in the audience, so I'm glad, glad you're here, and Pete, and uh, see, I shouldn't start naming people, but <laughs> Dan, Dan Wilhelm and uh, Jerry, Sam Ed, and, and we've got a whole group here. Um, I did want to acknowledge Bill Tompkins from our Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation who's here. <laughs> and, and, I, and Jonathan was mentioned, but we need 
We're just not there. We need you to be successful. Terry, you're leading the way. Uh, we look forward to the, the work that you're doing. We know you're working hard, and this team, there's a lot happening in East County. Uh, I just came from a Fed committee hearing, an economic development committee hearing, where we were looking at economic indicators over the last year. Um, and they are looking good. Uh, but to the council president's point, we want to make sure that we're not resting on our laurels and that we're building for success in the future. Uh, if you compare us to uh, Northern Virginia or Fairfax and vacancy rates for retail um, and for business and for offices, we're about the same, we're doing a little better. Um, I think one of the things we need to do is we can say at the same time we can do better, but that we're not doing too bad either. And, and, and we have a lot of assets here, we have a lot to build upon, and in East County in particular, we have a lot to do. Uh, the county executive mentioned 90% of our businesses less than 50 people, 80% less than 15. That is a large section of our economy. My parents are members of that community, both started small businesses here in the county. Um, we need to do more to support people who have great ideas. And having this center and this group here, well, under the leadership of Judy and Daniel and DeVance uh, and Mayor Banda, uh, will, you know, uh, will do a great job uh, in bringing those resources to the, to the community. Um, as the county executive mentioned, we are looking at, at the council, a comprehensive framework. We have all agreed that this is a priority for all nine of us and that we're gonna work together under those pillars that were described to make sure we're moving things forward. So that th means making things easier for people to do business in the county. It's regulation, it's capital, it's all the, it's workforce development, it's economic development. So we're gonna need you to partner with us and, and we're gonna be working with the county executive on that. So it's great to be here. It's exciting to launch this today and look forward to working with everyone in the room. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Jawanda. Um, our next guest the speaker is someone who I had the pleasure of working with when I was in a uh, previous federal role. So I have seen him in action. I know that he is serious. I know that he is authentic. And I know that his, his concern and care for economic development stretches far and wide. And we're glad to have him as a representative of Montgomery County. Please help me welcome Mr. Antonio Dawson. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see so many people filling the room here today to uh, recognize the startup of this new center. Uh, and I want to congratulate uh, all the Montgomery County leadership, county executive, and uh, council president as well. Uh, small business is critical to the growth of everybody's economy. No matter where you are, uh, the small business segment is something that drives the health of an economy. Uh, we have, from our Office of Advocacy, Advocacy, the Small Business Administration did a study a couple years back, and one of the things that they looked at was what drove the success of an economy, and they compared like the bringing in of the Amazon or other big name organization uh, into a county or into a state or into a region, and what they determined was that wasn't the biggest indicator of a, the health of a particular economy. It was the vibrancy of the small business marketplace, the number of startups and the number of failures, believe it or not. But that, that churning, that cycle that says people are in, uh, invigorated about having business ownership. And to have business ownership as a entrepreneur is a risky venture. Uh, it's not to be taken lightly. And that's why this is so important that you have a center here that not only helps uh, inform people uh, by way of information and materials, but also holds events and sessions where education can take place. And you do it not on, on your own and alone, but also with other people who are partners with SBA and, and we all partner and work together. It's a, it's a very big collaborative group uh, because none of us really single-handedly can influence and impact the entrepreneurial community the way we would like to single-handedly. So we all come together uh, to make it happen. And I think that's really important um, piece that sometimes gets overlooked is the collaboration that exists between the lenders, uh, whether they're banks or uh, nonprofit like the uh, Life Asset, whether they're the small business development centers or the women's business centers or the county, we're all in this together. SCORE, every one of us are trying to accomplish essentially the same thing, which is to create a pathway, to create an environment where entrepreneurs can feel comfortable to take that first risk and take it as a wise step. Uh, it's very easy to get motivated to start a business if you had a bad day on the job. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the best approach to take. You want to be thoughtful about it. And so, you know, we often uh, talk about what it takes to be a successful business owner. 
And I'm reminded of something an old colleague in, when I was in banking uh, shared with me years ago, and that people who are starting a business have to be able to do a couple things. They have to be able to sell a product or a service. You know, you can have the greatest product or service out there, but if you can't sell it, you know, what good is it? So sometimes we'll get entrepreneurs who are great salespeople, and they can sell you anything that you want to buy and anything that you never thought you ever needed, and you'll still buy it. But that in and of itself is not enough. You have to have somebody who knows how to create that product or service and deliver it. And again, a great salesperson, bad product, you're not going to return back. So you're, you're, you're going to be a one sale and done kind of a company. And so a lot of times we'll see business owners who can come in as entrepreneurs with one or two of those sets pretty skill sets pretty strongly. But often it's that third component, the third leg of the stool, which is do you understand how to manage and administrate a business? Do you understand how to build cash flow, how to manage your resources, how to put in place the things that are fundamental to a good business operation? And if you don't have that third leg of the stool, you know, it's difficult to sit on any two-legged stool. It's difficult sometimes to sit on a three-legged stool. Uh, we prefer five if we can get five. Uh, but that's an important component is to make sure you have all of those together. And what the resource centers are going to be able to do is to create more and more opportunities to strengthen the likelihood of success for a business to come in and to be a, uh, a healthy company to start, to grow, and very importantly, to sustain that level uh, or exceed that level uh, as they continue to mature. Uh, I'll share with you, we've been doing a number of um, educational programs. Uh, we started this, this past uh, spring uh, in April with a, a program we call Emerging Leaders, and we take a cohort of 15 to 20 small business CEOs, and they participate in a seven-month pretty intensive program. Uh, we're fortunate when we kicked off the program hosted this year at the Montgomery County Chamber of Commerce, the county executive was able to come and deliver welcoming remarks and opening remarks to the group. That group has benefited so much from the training. Sometimes it's not necessarily the training you get from the person in front of the room. Sometimes it's the information exchange that happens. And I go to those sessions and I sit and I listen because I hear the business owners speaking about real issues that they're dealing with. Sometimes they're not even the same issues that we at SBA would think are the issues that they have. And so it sharpens our pencil to be a better provider of services and resources. And so I encourage any of you who are in the, the field of um, entrepreneurial development support uh, or economic development support to you know, keep a close ear to the ground to what your constituents, what your clients are saying and what their needs are because often it's not the same thing that we think it is. Uh, we similarly just have, uh, and that Emerging Leaders Program, by the way, it's getting ready to graduate. We just held our last session uh, last Friday, and they got a chance to share their growth plans on where they're going to go with their business, and people are very excited. Uh, similarly, we're doing a program uh, over at uh, Bowie State University um, on an, something called an 8 Accelerator, and it's a similar model, but this one's very focused on government contracting. And the feedback we got from the, uh, the first session we did this past April and May was people said after going through the session, they developed confidence that they could do the thing that they went into business to do. And that kind of floored me because to go into business, I kind of hope that you have enough confidence to go into it, right? But there's a limit or the difference between having confidence to go into it and have confidence that you can really execute on it. And so what they told us was that by going to sessions, by learning, by sharing information, by taking advantage of the mentorship that exists uh, in that program and other venues, they develop more confidence to not only be in business, to be, be successful in business. So I say all that to say the work that's going on here is vitally important. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, Daniel and DeVance and um, the whole crew is working. Um, and Judy. And Judy, yes, and Judy as well. I don't want to forget Judy. Uh, is working so hard to put this in place and to make a meaningful difference. I congratulate also the council on looking at metrics and performance items. Uh, they're vitally important. Um, you know, we at SBA, we struggle with making sure we get the right metrics in place. Uh, do as best you can to get them right because whatever you say that you're going um, you're going to go on and you're going to watch, that's what people are going to behave to perform. And uh, 
I've seen cases where we've, we've had great intentions on really good metrics and we actually didn't have the best metrics. And as a result, we didn't get the results that we wanted to get. But I applaud you for putting in place that, that, that effort and to make sure that not only are we doing things, but we're measuring activities, outputs, outcomes, and the economic impact that goes along with it. So I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Uh, looking forward to working with you again as a partner and glad to be here today and much success to everyone. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, please help me welcome uh, from the Greater Silver Spring Chamber of Commerce, Michael McCarlin. Good afternoon. I'm Mike McCartan. I'm with uh, Joseph W. McCartan Insurance and a member of the uh, Greater Silver Spring Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. I serve as the uh, co chair of the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee. Our president, Jane Redeker, uh, had hoped to be with us today, but she uh, is uh, out of town and attending to some family matters. I'd also like to introduce another board member, Debbie Keller from uh, Revere Bank. I, I am also a resident of uh, Eastern Montgomery County for 50 plus years, so hopefully that doesn't give away too much of my age, but uh, I've been here in the eastern part of the county for a, a long, long time and uh, have had the opportunity to do business here for a, a long time. And it's a, it's a great place to live and a, a great place to work. Uh, on behalf of the more than 400 members of the Greater Silver Spring Chamber of Commerce, most of, most of which are small businesses, I wanna thank Montgomery County for creating the uh, Business Connect I Initiative Small business is the life lifeblood of any community, as we've heard uh, several speakers here mention. Uh, being a small business owner is rewarding, but is also very challenging. You have to navigate many laws and reg regulations. You have to be able to gain access to capital. Uh, you have to find various state and county incentive programs. It can be daunting. There's a, there's a lot involved. The Chamber provides uh, incredible opportunities for business owners to make connections and build relationships that will help them grow their business. We can also help businesses navigate the, the many government regulations. And we have a robust advocacy program working to solve business problems and build a climate where businesses can see. What we don't have is, is an in-depth capacity to help people who want to start or expand their business. The classes and individual counseling offered through the Business Connect program will be a great resource for our members, for especially our potential members. We're especially pleased that they will be they will be available right here in our local regional <coughs> services center. Bless you. In both downtown Silver Spring and now in the here in the East County. We can see referring people to both locations to find someone who will hold their hand through the process of starting a business or enroll, enroll in a class where they can learn how to register the business, write a business plan, or take advantage of the various incentive programs. We intend to be a full partner in this effort, and we hope that the partnership can, we, we hope that the partnership can involve some of our members as resources and subject ac experts. Our chamber has many members who are experts or ha who have expertise in various aspects of running the business from financial planning, marketing, uh, negotiating le a lease, the many legal hurdles that one, one must uh, work their way through. We look forward to working with the local business solutions group team to identify opportunities for our members to be involved. And uh, on behalf of the members and staff of our chamber, we applaud the county executive for bringing this effort to the East County and look forward to working as a partner on the Business Connect team. Thank you, Thank you very much. And now we're gonna call up some partners that we want to recognize with a proclamation. We're gonna have a group proclamation read and photo and then afterwards, we will hand out individual proclamations to those uh, that we list. Um, please come up when you call. The African American Chamber of Commerce of Montgomery County, County <coughs> Business Connect Partners, Greater Silver Spring Chamber of Commerce, Impact Silver Spring, Latino Economic Development Corporation, Life Asset, Maryland Small Business Development Center, 
Maryland Women's Business Center <coughs> School and WorkSource Montgomery. proclamation and then we'll take a picture it says whereas Montgomery County government is sponsor of Maryland Economic Development Association's Maryland Economic Development Week and whereas Montgomery County recognizes Maryland Economic Development Week as a way to focus attention on the critical importance of a thriving business community to the economic well-being of the county and the state of and Whereas the economic growth and stability of the state affects all regions and jurisdictions in Maryland, and Montgomery County's Business Connect partners are an important component of Montgomery County's economic success through partnership on the Montgomery County Business Council initiative, providing direct support to local businesses where they are located. I gotta stop, somebody mastered the art of getting all in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw Not points for periods in there. <laughs> now, now therefore do we, Mark Owens County Executive, Nancy Navarro is County Council President of Montgomery, uh, Council President of Montgomery County, uh, Maryland, hereby proclaim October 20th through 26th, 2019 as Economic Development Week to highlight the investments and partnerships that strengthens our competitiveness in Montgomery County and ask all to join with us to reaffirm the importance of business development locally and countywide. All right.